Meantime, the White House is defending U.S. President Trump over his remarks following the attacks there in New Zealand. On Friday, he downplayed the global threat of white nationalists, suggesting the racist group is too small to be dangerous. CNN's Boris Sanchez has more now from the White House. Critics of the president charged that the White House has not had a strong response to the attack we saw last week in New Zealand. Uh, some saying that the president should use the energy that he uses to attack Democrats and the press and others on Twitter to attack white supremacists. The president last week made a remark that suggested he did not believe that white supremacy and white supremacist groups were on the rise around the world, something refuted by evidence. The acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, uh, laughed at a question in a frustrated way about whether the president would come out more vociferously against white supremacy. Listen to what he said. The president is absolutely briefed on all of the threats, both domestic and international. Uh, but uh, I want to push back against this idea that every time something bad happens everywhere around the world, folks who don't like Donald Trump seem to blame it on Donald Trump. To the degree that there is an issue with white supremacists, white nationalist, anti-Muslim bigotry in this country, and there is an issue with that, why not deliver a speech condemning it. Right. You've seen the president stand up for religious liberties, individual liberties. The president is not a white supremacist. I'm not sure how many times we have to say that. The White House pushed back, saying that President Trump has condemned intolerance of all kinds thoroughly. Uh, the president also making news this weekend for his attacks on Twitter at late Senator John McCain. President Trump still upset over a vote that McCain cast in the Senate in 2017 against a slight repeal of Obamacare, a lean repeal of Obamacare. Uh, president Trump going after McCain, saying that it is a stain on his legacy. McCain's daughter, Megan McCain, shot back at President Trump in a sting rebuke. She writes, quote, no one will ever love you the way they loved my father. I wish I'd been given more Saturdays with him. Maybe spend years with your family instead of on Twitter obsessing over mine. The spat between these two prominent Republicans still something that President Trump holds as a grudge. Remember that back in 2015 when he launched his campaign for the presidency and got criticism from McCain, President Trump criticized the Arizona senator saying that he was not a war hero after he had been captured as a prisoner of war in Vietnam. Boris Sanchez, CNN at the White House. Let's discuss this with Peter Matthews, a political analyst and a professor of political science at Cypress College. He joins me live from Los Angeles, a frequent guest here. Peter, how are you doing? Thanks for being with us. Fine, thank you, Natalie. Well, let's begin with the comments or the lack of comments from President Trump, who did not point a finger uh, after a massacre at far right wing white nationalism. What are your thoughts on that? The silence is deafening, isn't it? I mean, can you imagine this? It's pretty expected in a sense because this man has been avoiding in any way criticizing the right-wing extremists from Charlottesville all the way down to what happened in New Zealand. And he says that's not really, white supremacy is not a problem, he says. The violence, he says it's not a problem in the world. And we, all the experts know it's been growing. Mm -hmm. We know that President Trump's remarks about go out to hecklers when in his campaign, he said the supporters go out and, and beat them up and I'll take care of the, of the legal bills. Is many, many things. I have the police and the military on my side, and the left better watch out because when the right wing, who I have on my side, gets tough, uh, there's going to be something that's really hard to pay. You have to pay for it. So you have to really, really, it's a warning against his political opponents. A very not so veiled warning against it. This is very much of an intimidation tactic and uh, against freedom of speech and a true democracy, a democratic uh, democracy flourishing. We saw in that interview with Fox News, uh, and um, pushing down uh, on the on the White House uh, administration for President Trump's lack of uh, speaking out more about it. And what kind of struck me with Mr. Mulvaney there talking with Chris Matthews was he chuckled at the notion yeah, just, that the U.S. president has a problem here. A chuckle. That was just odd. It's not. It's more than odd. It's, I think, in my view, kind of outrageous that someone as close as the, the president he is would just uh, make a joke out of it of what the president's lack of concern about this. And it's more of the same coming from this administration, not really wanting to be really fair and critical about these right-wing extremists. By the way, I just had a lecture on, on right-wing extremism in my class. Uh, these folks believe in social Darwinism. They believe in the survival of the fittest. And those who can dominate through violence and force uh, are legitimate. Uh, every, they dominate everyone else. That's the way it works, and that's uh, ideology. And these folks do not mince any words. You know, the people that support them, the extremists who we saw at Charlottesville, 
And the president doesn't want to hit back at them because he thinks that even those who support him who won't be vocal about it might pull back their support if he's not supportive in a sense uh, of the actual right-wing extremists. So that's why he's playing this game, which is very dangerous for democracy. And we've all got to watch out for that and see if we can in any way stop him from doing this. Right, the mass murderer there in New Zealand mentioned President Trump in his manifesto. Um, so uh, quite obvious he was affected uh, uh, by Mr. Trump. And, and it just, it, it begs the question, without the United States, which the world looks to, to make a stand on things like this, does that cause a more dangerous situation uh, for the world? You know, you look at New Zealand, we just heard from the Prime Minister and uh, what they're dealing with there. And um, it, it almost is worrisome that more things will be carried out like this unless you have the United States uh, joining with other leaders around the world, condemning this and taking it very seriously. Absolutely. In fact, uh, if you look at the shooter, the killer in New Zealand, he actually said that President Trump, he praised him and said this man is giving us a white identity. And he's for identity politics for the white, in quote, race, which is so, that's a misnomer. It's only one race, the human race. But these supremacists believe they're uh, exceptional. Mr. Trump is their symbol. And this man mentioned Trump's name. That's so alarming because you're right. This, will spread, this could spread all over the world. Already has been. This white supremacy has gone all over the world. In Europe, for example, even in electoral politics, the extreme Marie Le Pen, she was able to win so many votes in France, many other people like that in the electoral system alone. But then these folks are outside the electoral system. They're coming with guns and rifles and bombs. And imagine what Muslim Americans and Muslim people around the world might feel right now in, when they worship in the mosques on Fridays. They're not secure at all. And the very most intimate activity someone can do is to communicate with their particular god or higher power and this is not right no one should be intimidated when president trump heard about the coptic christians in egypt he mentioned that christians were were massacred or or threatened he heard about the jewish killing and he mentioned the jewish people were threatened when it came to this situation he did not not a word about the fact that folks at the mosques were muslims he didn't worship one minute the muslim, muslim word wasn't mentioned by him at all and that is very telling that he seems to have some kind of an anti-Muslim bias. That's very wrong, especially right. in American politics. Right, and as you say, he continues to attack his political enemies. He attacked uh, John McCain, who passed away a few months ago. He attacks Hillary Clinton, but he does not attack white nationalist groups. Uh, big question there. Absolutely. Yes. Well, Peter, we yeah. always appreciate your insights. Peter Matthews for us. Thanks so much. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Natalie. Appreciate it.